My name is Mackenzie Richter and I'm a professional ballerina and I'm going to show you how I prepare my point shoes. Um, so first things first, everything I use is obviously my point shoes, ribbons, elastics, I have some thread, a big fat needle, and I have this darning thread that is just a super thick thread, um, scissors, and a lighter. Um, I would usually use jet glue before I wear them, and then after a couple days, once they've kind of formed to my foot, and they're getting the shape that I like. I wear a freed point shoe. Um, they're a crown maker, and this model specifically, I think, is modeled after the classic Freed. But, of course, I've made my own modifications and stuff. So I have, instead of the classic insole, I have a suede insole, just so it's less slippery on my foot. Um, I have a three-quartered shank, which I can kind of show you. Um, I have a three-quartered shank, comes like that. And usually classic comes with a full shank, so this is what's called a combined shank. You can see it's stamped there. Um, and that means it's a harder shank. It's kind of like two shanks in one, or I think they just put extra glue, but it's extra hard. Um, so I have a lot of support here in the top of the shoe and then um, super flexible heel. Um, some other specifications I have are some extra paste in the wings of my box. And I also have a U-shaped front right here. Um, I have bunions, so that kind of gives me like a little bit of extra space. I think they usually would be cut like a V, so they're a little more constricted. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think, of my shoe. Is that all I Let's see if you can read everything. But yeah, five and a half, two X. That's my crown maker. Um, this U right here is because of the U on this part. Um, they're made for me, that's my name. <laughs> and these were made 13th of March, 2020. Lovely date right there. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first thing I usually do when I take out my point shoes is I will wear them for a bar before I even sew them. So that's why you see the drawstrings are already um, pulled here. Um, and I don't usually pull them too tight. Um, I will actually usually do this before I even put them on my foot. I will just pull the drawstrings a little bit to where they have a little bit of tension and then tie them there. And usually that's good. If I do it too tight, it gets like of painful on my heel there um so yeah these are already like a little bit broken in but I haven't glued them yet because i haven't worn them for real yet <laughs> um so yeah the first thing i will usually do is um my shoes come three-quartered so this guy is kind of flapping around everywhere and i will usually just sew it down to the shoe right here stitches and I always have my thread doubled up so that it's a little stronger and I use just whatever regular thread I can find this is like an upholstery thread so it's a little bit has a little bit more durability 
usually just do like two stitches, knot it off, and then we move on. Okay, so I'll show you how I do my knots. So I'll usually hold it like this and then wrap it around my thumb. And then I will kind of just like push it off of my thumb while pushing this thread into the center so that I'm pushing this through the loop right there and then just pulling it through. And I, I don't know, this has just become my like fastest way to knot my thread. And I always knot it three times because third time's a charm, I guess. So finding my perfect shoe obviously took quite a long time, um, especially with Freed, there's a million options <laughs> for customizations. There's a bunch of different makers, and even though all the makers are Freed makers, they are all completely different shoes. Um, so I actually just started off by trying other dancers' shoes who were in my company, other people who had similar size foot to me and see if there was anything that um, felt like it would work. And I kind of landed on this shoe pretty early on, but I, I made you know a few of my own modifications and since this happens to be a very popular maker of Freed, uh, it actually took about two years for my first order to come in. <laughs> so waiting through that time, obviously I had to just scrounge for anything that would work. And I tried a bunch of different makers of Freed's and Crown was still my favorite, of course. And I, I've been in this same shoe for a few years now and I um, feel like I've gotten it down to a system where they're usually pretty reliable and I know they're going to do what I need them to do. I do like to wear my shoes pretty new for performances. Um, and I guess specifically for the stage I perform on, it's very different from our studio's floor. So a hard shoe in the studio is completely different than a hard shoe on stage. And I can't really wear shoes that I've worn on stage in the studio anymore. Like they just feel completely different. So I have designated shoes for the theater and the studio usually so that I can keep it um, keep it consistent and I can't think of anything like specifically for performance um, it's a malfunction or a kind of a lesson learned <sighs> Lesson learned is I always have to jet glue my shoes. <laughs> um, sometimes I think my shoes are pretty new and they're hard enough to make it through a show. Um, but you know, with stage lights and everything, like they get kind of hot and they kind of melt. And I think when I jet glue them, it just makes them stay in the same shape that they are. And I know I can, I can trust that they're gonna they're gonna last. Um, if I'm doing a three act ballet or just any ballet that requires a lot of dancing and I have time to change my shoes, usually I will change my shoes. Um, when I did Aurora, I, I wore two pairs of shoes for that show. Um, just because I knew they wouldn't last all three all three acts. Um, my elastics usually are good. They've only come off one time in a show and 
Um, I was doing a solo from a ballet called The Tempest, which is by David Bentley. And um, I was doing a part called Iris, and she has a really long solo that's all basically Borets, and she's on point the entire time. And probably about 30 seconds before I went on stage, I went to adjust my heel, like just pulled up, oh, I shouldn't have done that, sorry. <laughs> I just pulled up the heel of my shoe one last time just to make sure it was on, and the elastic just snapped. And I remember being like, well, guess I gotta go on stage like this. And I just tucked in that extra elastic and did the dance and it was fine. But yeah, after that I kinda uh, learned to make sure they were sewn really well and with like a stronger um, thread. stabbed myself. That is one thing with sewing point shoes. You stab yourself in the finger a lot and you learn to it, not let it phase you. Uh, most of the time, since I you know, wear a new shoe every few or even every couple days, I'm usually in the studio sewing like if I have a rehearsal where I'm not needed and I'm just like trying you know I usually would just pay attention and sew at the same time so a lot of times I'm sewing without even looking at my shoe <laughs> in an effort to multitask so yeah I've stabbed myself many times and I'm kind of immune to it at this point I'm sure most ballerinas can attest to that I'll just, I'll show you the other knot once I get to the end of this one. Elastic. So kind of a similar thing where I'm looping it around my, or I'm just making a loop and then I'm sticking the needle through the loop. And, oh, this is hard to show, but pushing it down like that so it stays super close to the actual shoe. Gotta kind of put it down to do it right. Ugh, I need to show this better with a longer thread. Sometimes I do four times because I just feel like it needs it. <laughs> Now we have the last 
stick all on there. I can show it like which I should say closer how it looks. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but you don't see it from far. I don't have time to make it pretty. The ribbons are already cut, but um, usually how I measure them is I'll take it in my thumb and index finger, hold it out like this, and I'll measure it all the way to my shoulder. And that is the right amount for one shoe. Um, so I'll cut it in half and then I have these little sections that are the perfect length. And then I never have any extras left over. So that is also good. Um, so then before I sew them on, I will usually take my lighter that just keeps them from fraying and I use stretchy ribbons because they look nicer and when you move your foot they aren't um, moving around everywhere and gapping in weird places yeah so I kind of just put them right there where the um, casing of the drawstring is the right where the elastic is line it up and I always sew from the inside so we're not showing any knots I can show this knot one more time, probably better, hopefully. And sometimes it gets caught and tangled and I never fix it because it won't come untied, I know that. <laughs> and I don't know why I always like put them together like that before I burn them so that's like, I don't know, they're closer <laughs> together. So to darn my shoes, um, I'll 
I'll show you nice and closely. But I don't make the platform like completely flat with the darning. Like I don't like when I can feel it too much on the floor, which you might think, okay, then what's the point of the darning? But um, this kind of, when my shoe starts to break down, it will kind of smooth out itself here. Um, so I do kind of leave it like, I don't know the best way to show this, but a little bit down from the platform. So when my shoes kind of break in a little bit, this will eventually be flat, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, and I don't go all the way around with my darning. I just start about here and I go around it, first of all, a bunch of times to sew down the end. And I'll actually go through the yarn as well so that I can't just pull it and it come through the loop. And then as I start to go around, I'll leave like pretty small little gap, but I'll show you in a second. I go there and then I put the needle through the extra loop and then pull it tight. So then I'm basically tying like little um, knots all the way around. a little space, go under, through the excess, and pull it tight. And this is a pretty lazy way to darn shoes, but um, I only wear my shoes for two or three days before they're kind of done. And this is about as much work as I can put in. <laughs> for how many shoes I have to sew. But um, I have noticed that freeds are particularly easy to darn because the satin is not really glued down to the shoe. So it's pretty easy to get underneath the satin and actually sew through. Um, some other shoes are a little bit more difficult, I've heard and seen from my coworkers having to darn hard, hard shoes. So yeah, just do that all the way around. Well, not all the way, almost all the way. And then when I get to the end, I will do the same thing as the beginning. I'll go around a few times and go through the yarn itself to make sure it can't slip through. How many times in this video will Mackenzie stab herself? and then just cut off the excess from there.
sorry. And you can see how I kind of have a little space for me to go over my platform a little bit when I'm on the floor. I don't want it to stop at where my platform is. I want to go a little further, but it does create like an extra ledge for me to stop, if that makes sense. And yeah, that's it. Usually I would, like I said, jet glue it before I wear it, but it's pretty much ready for rehearsal or stage now, honestly, because I do like to wear my shoes pretty new. Um, if I'm wearing my shoes on stage, I usually won't jet glue them as much, but breeds melt, so I gotta do a little bit, but they're usually okay at not being too loud on stage. So, yeah, that's about it. Yep, and that's how I prepare my shoes. My toe pads that I use are the Perfect Fit Point toe pads, and it's really cool. You like put these two clay type things together, you mix them together, and then in 10 minutes you're able to like mold these little things to your foot. You like put it on your foot, you put the toe pad on, and then you put your shoe on and you move around for 10 minutes until it hardens, and it kind of takes pressure off of certain places on your foot just like molds to the empty space in the shoe so it makes them a lot more comfortable <laughs> okay i'm gonna try them on make sure everything is in order 